Okay. We all know who Vincent Kennedy McMahon is. And most of us know of who Vincent James McMahon was. His father, both are referred to as Vince Sr. and Vince Jr., a distinction that is hated by Vincent Kennedy McMahon. But before them, the McMahon Pro Wrestling, Sports Entertainment, and surprisingly, Boxing Empire began with Roderick James McMahon. Born on May 26, 1882, Jess staged his first wrestling matches when he was just a child. And for his backyard events featuring neighborhood kids against each other and also neighborhood kids paying in pins, pennies. Uh, let me see, what else did they have there? Uh, well, just whatever you could come up with. <laughs> they got admission to these uh, wrestling matches. So anytime anybody wants to talk about backyard, I guess we all just need to take a step back and realize where we just started from and could explain uh, Vince presently. So anyway, he and his brother uh, in 1911 started the New York Lincoln Giants, a black baseball team that had numerous wins in their first three years, including victories over all white teams. Money issues forced the brothers to sell the team in 1914. In 1915, they traveled to Cuba to promote a boxing match, their first, uh, between Jack Johnson and Jess Willard. Jess's greatest ability as a boxing promoter was in setting up matches that would produce the best fights. He was also completely unafraid to cross the color barrier and set matches up between fighters of all races. Jess was an ardent fan of boxing who wanted to showcase real fighters and real fights. He gave fighters of color equal opportunities to fight as the white fighters. He did not tolerate dodging, nor did he set up fights that privileged race over skills. Some detractors may have despised him for his policy, but the majority of the press, the fighters, the fighting fans, especially the boxing fans of color, adored Jess and his devotion to promoting real fighters. But before Jess could become the celebrated boxing matchmaker or sign of professional wrestling, he had to move beyond an early accusation, uh, accusation to the boxing commission that the McMahon brothers were a threat to the sport of boxing. They eventually faced off and ultimately came out on top against these assertions and their success grew. It was after this that Edward disappears from all accounts and his future is not known. Jess formed a partnership with George Tex Rickard, another famous boxing promoter, who would go on to found the National Hockey League. Together with Rickard, Jess burst into the boxing world, focusing on setting up fights that would begin to dismantle the deeply entrenched racism in boxing and sports in general. Jess frequently moved as the promoter of one arena to another, and in 1932, he promoted his first professional wrestling event at the Municipal Stadium in Freeport, New York. Jess stepped directly into the vicious turf battles that plagued New York's wrestling scene in the 1930s. Jess once again formed a partnership to ensure his promotion success, this time with Carlos Henriquez a competitive wrestler who managed to book events at both the Brooklyn Sports Stadium and the Coney Island Stadium. This alliance diminished the, the raging turf war enough for Jess to sign a number of prominent wrestlers, including uh, Gino Garibaldi, Jim Browning, Hans Kompfer, Wee Willie Davis, Mike Romano, The Dusik, Everett Marshall, Tor Johnson, and Abe Cashy. But his most successful wrestling contact was with the wrestling great Joseph Raymond Toots Mock, with whom Jess would create the Capital Wrestling Corporation in 1952. By that time, Jess's son, Vincent J. McMahon, had become an integral part of his father's business endeavors. Jess was getting older, and Vince's passion for wrestling catapulted their business from the Capital Wrestling Corporation into joining the National Wrestling Alliance. It is important to know that Jess instilled in his son a tremendous work ethic, a head for business, and the tenacity that would eventually become atrocious 
to put it mildly, and the grandson, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Jess's legacy as a boxing promoter is far more prolific than his career as a wrestling promoter. He was arguably the founder of the future WWE, but he can best be remembered as an early promoter of mixed race fights, an advocate for color blindness in matchmaking, and an astute businessman. In later years, Jess served as vice president for the National Sports Alliance Fund for Indigent Boxers in New York State. And in 1954, he died at the age of 72 of a cerebral hemorrhage, which struck him while attending a wrestling match in Queens, New York. And there we have a little bit of unknown or lesser WWE history.